has changed. There is a global crisis. The prices of goods and services is rising. Consumers in all sectors are being affected. Consumer groups are challenged, maybe now more than ever, in protecting the rights of consumers and advocating for the interests. In studio with me is Mr. Hubert James, Interim President of the National Consumers Association. He was a co-founder. Mr. James, good day. Good afternoon. You've heard the issue. Mr. James now will provide us with the answers. My name is Marvin St. Louis. Good day to you all. Mr. James, <clears throat> earlier you told me men should not sit for too long. I do not intend to keep you here for too long. <laughs> um, tell us a little about yourself in terms of the National Consumers Association, your consumer advocacy. Um, for me, it has been from since 2019, I joined the Consumer Affairs Department and I was exposed to the world of consumer advocacy. Um, consumer education is big, is a big thing for me. Um, tell us about your background. Well, the when the, the idea came about to form the National Consumer Association, it came from Philip McLaurin, who was the director of Consumer Affairs at that time. And there was a call for the region to come together and to begin to look at ways and means to set up for, um, NGOs to assist the government and to defend the rights of the people, because they were of the opinion that a lot of the private sector were taking advantage on the consumers. And as a result, they felt that there should have been an organization who would defend the rights and defend the cause of the people and champion the cause. So the call came with, with um, Philip, then Andrew Antoine, then myself, and um, a few others, Mary Isaac, a few others. We, were, we, we came in and we began to look at the mechanism how to do things, to look at the, the, the constitution of the, of, the, of the NCA, look at the, the start drafting consumer bills because it was only the price, the price Control Act and, and, and goods and services that was, that was there at the time. So we didn't have um, much teeth for going to fight the cause of the people. Very fortunately now we have the, the, the Consumer Protection Act which gives us a wider band of the responsibilities and the area we can move in, into. And that has helped us to, to understand, to communicate with the private sector. I mean, we have had some very good relationship with some of them. Some of them are, as usual, you expect that to happen because people want to make their profit and try to hold them back. So as a result, you go to get a little resistance. But generally, I find the environment is conducive. And then we uh, continue to push forward to ensure that the consumers are given the right Jews, the right value for the money. And as though that's the first question you ask, this global pandemic that has taken us through these high prices of things, I mean, when you look at even, it's affected everybody everywhere. Even you and I, because those of us are vehicle, a gallon of gas, almost $18. So that is a lot of money you have to pay for gas. So everybody are being affected by these high prices of things because of the global war with um, um, Ukraine and, and, and Russia and causing the price of things to go up. And in discussion with the private sector, because I, I go to the supermarket pretty often, and I watch at the prices of goods, and I see, even I went to one of the stores, a little packet of, um, of cow food, which you'd get for $35, $89. I said, what caused that? Never the well, shipment is a cause of shipping, and also that's what causes the price of the thing. So everybody being affected by that high prices because of this global war that going on there right now is causing us not to be able to expand because the higher the price goes, the less disposable income you have. 
So therefore, you're going to buy, to buy less goods or don't buy certain goods at all because you can't afford it. And that is reflecting more not of those affordables, but those little people who work in the small stores and these things who barely get a little, a little $400 a month for, 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 for their wages or even $200 a fortnight. Yes. So it is very hard on those persons. So therefore, we have to continue to advocate, to begin to speak. And then somebody tell me, Mr. James, you know how hard it is for us to try to control this price, keep these prices down? If we have to apply that the exact price we, we pay to ship those goods, we will not be able to eat. So therefore, I know the government is trying the best to see how they can chip in to give concession there, concession there. But still have not made that of a much great dent that people can see the value of their wages to be able to buy more goods from the stores. You mentioned <coughs> consumer, the, the importance of having consumer groups to advocate, champion the rights of consumers. One other consumer group that works very closely with the NCA is the Consumer Affairs, Associ Consumer Affairs Department. Um, could you differentiate the work of the Consumer Affairs Department and the NCA? I think it's important because most persons um, think it's maybe one entity. Could you elaborate on that? No, the, the Consumer Affairs Department, uh, they have certain responsibility like to import sugar, rice, flour, which is the thing that the government subsidized to, to the, the, the needy people, according, but everybody enjoyed it. The NCA is to defend the rights of the people against the merchants, against those persons who are offering goods and services. So the government cannot get involved in that because of the nature of government. But NCA has the latitude to, as an, as an NGO, to defend the, the rights of anybody. Even the ministers themselves, we can defend their own rights there if they come to us. So the, 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 the difference between the two organizations, there are things we can say to the private sector. The government can say, but in the government. But we cannot pass laws, we cannot pass, uh, make amendments, we can only advocate for that thing to happen. To push and tell the government, look, this is wrong, this is causing the problem, we give the, the rationale why we're asking for things to be done, and then the government will do as necessary to make certain law. That's why we had the Consumer Protection Act, which was passed. I mean, we said that thing since 2019, and it's only 2016 it was tabled into, into Parliament, and in 2000, not, yeah, 2016, early 2016, and it was passed in 2022. So that's why we have now, we have that, the law in our hands now. We have the weapon we needed to fight the cause of the people. Before we get to the act, has COVID-19 affected the approach of the NCA in terms of advocacy? Um, is, it, is, it, is it fair to say that some consumer groups are not keeping up with the changes in the environment? Some people are hinting that. Um, how has COVID-19 affected or what changes has the NCA made? Well, the, 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 the COVID has affected every factor of the society, everywhere. You could not meet, you could not I mean, have discussion face to face, you have a mask on your face, as you could see my head if matching. You have, so there was a COVID definitely shook the, 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 the fabric of the world, and even our own country. And um, because of that, a lot of people capitalize on, on, on COVID for them to make profit. And uh, some of the things which I believe we can look at. Lo there are a lot of local products. I think it's a big to move into using local products. But even that has its challenges with it. Because there are certain goods which are not labor incentive, which you don't have to, to, to police or to care for, like coconuts, mangoes, breadfruits, avocados, um, 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 lemon, and this and that. And the price of these things has gone up drastically. I spoke to some of the vendors and I mean, oh, Mr. James, the price of things going up in the small market, so we have to increase our price for to be able to buy the thing in the small market. I understand that. I agree with that. But at the same time, it's about what price you're putting it up. You know, I mean, a little hand of green fig, $5. Let's be realistic. There's a certain thing, I mean, green fig, you have to continue to have it to, to care for the field. But like breadfruit and mangoes and this thing are not things you, you find them using the four little mangoes for $6. Five dollars. Don't tell you just go and pick. You don't care for it. And you're going to sell that for a little Mali way like yourself. And that's what the price you're selling it. I see some of the things people selling which are even worth to be on the market at all. And they're selling that to people at high prices. So we need to begin to focus. And the justification is that 
COVID and price of goods going up, so they must increase their own prices to be able to meet the cost to buy their own goods from some markets. Before we move further along, this is Issues and Answers, um, a production of the Government Information Service. We will be right back. I'm so fed up with my 14-year-old child. She's driving me crazy. I just don't know what to do. All that child need is some good licks to wake up. Alice, ignore the counseling pants is given. Government employees have free access to professional counseling services under the Employee Assistance Program known as EAP. EAP? EAP? What's that? Uh, not me that telling people my business. Listen to me, Alice. I was struggling with my child. I made an appointment to see an EAP counselor, and I was very satisfied with the service that I received. And you know what? Up to a day like today, my information remains confidential. Cox, how come nobody in the office knew anything about your counseling? Ah, that's because EAP counselors, they work on the strict clauses of confidentiality. I know you know what confidential means. Eh, uh -uh. EAP providing professional counseling services? How much is it? Girl, the counseling is free. Free for you, free for your child. And you know what? Your information remains confidential. Call the EAP unit at the Ministry of the Public Service. Telephone number 468-2269 for more information. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back. Mr. James, earlier this year, the government passed the Consumer Protection Act. You've hinted now consumer groups like yourself have more teeth. Um, could you tell us the importance of this act coming into law? And what are some of the major highlights and maybe some of the stuff that a consumer group would not have been able to do before and it's possible now? The Consumer Act is, has a wide band of the areas we can go and some goods and services, it covers everything. You go to a doctor and then you feel that the doctor can give you proper service or to a lawyer or to a store or to a uh, business place. You, you can file a complaint if you feel the service they give you was not the right kind of services. The, 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 the way the staff treat you, treat you, when you when you enter there, the way they, they, the kind of service they provide you with, and the Act may provide for all this ability to have a section for services and services wide in all what you offer to the members of the, of the public. So we did not have that, 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 that teeth to have gone to that area before. And now we have that so anybody who file a complaint against any of those institutions or service providers, like the, the telecommunications and, and, and Wasco and Lucilec and anyone, we can tackle that thing. But it also, also gave us a little bit to make a list with the ministry, the Department of Consumer Affairs, which the, the, the act make provision for there to be domestic, which is the organization like NCA, or if they come to you all directly. If you cannot settle that, it can go to mediation. If you can settle mediation, it can go to, to, to the, um, to the, the uh, uh, committee, which, which I'm going to look into the complaints how it's happened. And then the final one is the tribunal. The tribunal only activate and meet if any of these at the bottom, uh, which I've mentioned, did not succeed in, in, in solving the problem. And if a tribunal can succeed the problem, you have a right to go to the, to the high court, not to the high court, and pay the court. So you have enough steps that you can make sure that you get justice for whatever charges you have bring against the persons who brought the charge against. So therefore, it, it, we didn't have that before, and now it, that has, has happened. So we, we, the, the law gives the, the consumer the right to get value for the money. So if we cannot handle it at, at NC, we cannot solve it, we can transfer it to file a complete report and send to the Mission of Consumer Affairs. And when it reaches there, then it goes through the stages of those levels I have given you. So all the different levels at the Mission of Consumer Affairs. On the word of justice, let's talk about redress. Um, the Consumer Affairs Department provides redress to consumers 
but so does the NCA. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us the redress that a consumer can get um, coming to the NCA? Um, and how has that been for the organization dealing with um, businesses around St. Lucia and getting redress for consumers? Over, over the years, we have, NCA has succeeded in a lot of the cases that are there. I mean, I would say we have seen more cases than, 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 than losing the, the cases. Sometimes they, become, they give you the wrong information. Now, one of the things that, that consumers must learn, although the way the private sector functions now, they give a little motion tape. And by the time you reach to put a thing that it's already fed, you cannot see what, what, what's written That's on it. That's the receipt. So they don't have a receipt. Now, if you go and buy a higher purchase good somewhere, you must have that agreement to give you or that contract to give you. Or if you buy something, you must get a, a written receipt. But that's evidence to prove that you did purchase and provide that service. So that is your first step to file the complaint. If you don't have it, and you can't answer the question we're asking you, we will not be able to proceed with the case. We may just take a chance to try our, our luck to see if the person is going to admit yes, the person bought that thing from you, I do that for the person. But if not, it's the receipt you need to have for us to be able to say, Yo, look, you can't deny it, was, that was your receipt. And the, but the little motion tape, that fit in too quickly, and then you cannot use that. If it does have you, you just rip it right away. But if you let a few days or months pass, it becomes difficult for us to file a case for without the receipt. So the receipt is very important for any consumer who bought, buy, purchase, or do anything with anybody, you must have that receipt where you pay the person for that service. And do then you can take it from that movie field. Do you think consumers or enough consumers know about redress? Um, the reason why I say that is consumer education is one of the major pillars in terms of consumer advocacy. Mm -hmm. And one of the pillars that would affect change, change in a consumer. Um, we've seen a lot of consumers online complain about not receiving redress, but yet there are at least two agencies, the NCA and the Consumer Affairs Department, that provide redress to consumers depending on the sector. You have other agencies, for example, the Bureau of Standards, Southwest Management Authority, that deals with their sector. Do you think consumer education or the, the penetration of a lot of the roles of these consumer groups are reaching the consumers? And why, if you think it's not reaching them? Okay. We must also understand that the private sectors are also consumers. They may not be selling gas there, but they're going to go buy, buy the food on the other side there. And they buy the food and they go to the butcher shop. So we all are consumers, but at different levels of, but generally everybody are consumers. When this people, uh, education is being given to the people every day, that uh, the PS is on that, on that radio and television, talking about um, high sodium in food, talking about the, the, the things, and even we don't read the labels. The, the, the labels has the information about the goods. It is your responsibility to read what is written on these labels, so you can know whether you should buy the thing or not. Also, either the bottom or the top of the, of, of the things you buy, has an expiry date on it. You're supposed just to know these things also. Just go and go to the supermarket and just pick up things, drop in a in basket and go with it. You must know now, when you see the price of the thing reduced, something is wrong. Either the, the date of expiration is coming to a to very close, so you put the reducer, you can buy it to find it, sell it out. Or it is something that you need to, to, to know. So therefore you must read what is written, that's why this information are there for you to read it. So while the, the, the Ministry of Consumer Affairs and the NCA are supposed to educate the public on certain thing, but the public must themselves, they people are not paying money to print those labels without you educating what is on the labels. So therefore the responsibility also yours to educate yourself on, on it is also our responsibility to tell you what you may not know. Okay. And that's the, the two consider the, the, the two groups with the, the, the consumer themselves must know that. The Bureau of Studies are the, are the arm that which we, we, we rely on. So then things which we cannot do, or we have the experts to do, the president has to do it. They have standards. Yeah. And as far as my interaction with the Bureau of Standards, 
A lot of these private sectors are represented on the standards committee of what's happening in the Indian space, so therefore they are aware of what's happening. Consumers, Mr. James is saying you need to be responsible and exercise a high level of awareness when shopping. Um, this is Issues and Answers. We'll be right back. We are working parents and we breastfed both babies exclusively. I have six years, I have all the teeth and all the good cereal. Mother's breast milk is naturally the best milk for baby. Love yourself and love your baby. Breastfeeding saves me money and it's free. Every moment I breastfeed strengthens the bond between me and my baby. I breastfed twin boys and lost all my baby fat. We were breastfed! And we have breast milk power. I am Pastor Alvin and I support breastfeeding. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359. Mr. James, is it fair to say the relevance of a consumer group like the NCA is no more in a digital age? The reason why I say that is a consumer may argue that they will go on Facebook, they will go on these social media platforms and get redress. Um, in some cases, it has worked. Um, the NCA would say, no, you need to join a consumer group like ours. Um, what is your take on that? Yeah. To defend the right of a consumer doesn't mean you have to be a member of the NCA. Our role is to deal with consumers, generally. So therefore, it would be very, very good for if everybody could join the NCA, that's going to be fine. We would welcome that. But you don't have to be. I will tell you, because you're a member of the NCA, we can't defend you, no, that, that's wrong. That's, 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 that's a myth. We defend everybody. In the digital age, a lot of people put things on, on Facebook and it's factor. So not everything you see on Facebook or in, in the internet, you just have to take and just hold it and say, that's what it is. That's not true. There are a lot of, a lot of fake information on, on the internet, and you must have that astuteness to understand whether that thing makes sense or not. Just, just take it and go ahead with it, it's poison to you. So therefore, NC is still relevant because we also have a, a, a website where people can log into, into, into the website and see what, what, what is there. And can persons also submit complaints? Yes, comment there? and complain on, on the website. That is, there's a complaint form on the website. So you can interact that way with the NCA. So that while the digital age is making things supposed to make things more, more accessible and, and easier, but not everybody who has the skills to be able to handle or money for themselves through these, these, these websites and this thing to get information that they want or they expect to get. So therefore, NCA is relevant still because you have senior people who are not technological savvy. And then you have even the younger persons. I mean, if they can use the phone to make a call, well, how to whether they, they, can, they can swim through that thing and get the thing information they want, there will be other people who cannot do it. So if it is relevant, you cannot just get rid of things because the, the, the internet is there. Mm -hmm. And supposing that the, the Lime or, or GDCL say that the, the, the server is done, what are you going to do? <laughs> so is the NCA looking for members currently? Always. Always. We'll welcome. Okay. So give us some of the benefits of joining the National Consumer Association. The benefit I said is about you, you, you have the information right inside there. So we have not put something out to the public yet, but you will have it there which you will be exposed to it. You will be, I mean, like um, the recalls from, from, from overseas. Unless we don't put it out to the people or the FDA or when people put it out, you're not going to know it. But with the NCA, the information is right in where we can, our members will know very early. They can pass it to somebody else and say, so therefore the inside information, you get it from source okay. and not from second or third hand. So when you speak 
of those things. You speak with a degree of authority, of informed. You know what you're talking about. Compared to you passing or you hear somebody talking, just pick it up and you add your own curry and black pepper into it. What would you say to some persons that are saying there was a lot of consumer issues recently and no one has heard from the NCA in terms of ad advocating for consumers? There were issues at the supermarket recently and in other areas. Um, what is your answer well, to Well, you, it's not everything that you just go and just go and talk. You need to want to investigate to find out why. And when you get to know why, because that's what I've been doing. I've been speaking to the, the private sector about the prices of goods, about, and that's about why that is so, why that is not so, and thing. And all of them have that same theory or the same answer. The cost of shipping these goods to the country is very high. And as a result of that, obviously, the private sector is not going to absorb all the cost. They're going to pass it to the consumers. And we all know that. Now, is that reasonable or unreasonable? Should I hire a business to, for me to be at a loss? Or should I do it for me to break even? Or should I do it for me to make a big profit? Which one are you going to choose? Now, the consumer themselves must know that I have $10 in my pocket, and I need X, Y, Z. What are the options I have? You don't have to go for brand anymore. You have to go to what's, what's affordability. You may not be able to buy what, what, what I can use. Something, uh, buy a, a bottle of, of, of Hennessy for $200. But you may be able to buy a bottle of, of, of brandy or something that is cost about $27. So therefore, it is, therefore it's the choices that you're making will decide how far your money stretch, how economically you can use your money. So the consumers has that responsibility also. So we keep, in, we keep on doing things. I mean, it's true I have not been out in the public to keep on talking about everything, but we are doing a lot of things to help them to control the price of a little bit, which we have got much control over, but we try our best to make sure we have consultation okay. to make sure things work right. We have under two minutes left. So one final thought from you, I will ask you a message, to send a message to a consumer right now who's going to the supermarket, who's going to get services and they see seeing increase in prices, um, there's less money in their pocket. What recommendation or what explanation would you give to a consumer like that um, in terms of how to operate in the climate we are? In the climate we are, consumers have been more astute in spending their money. They have been more strategic. You have to forget about brands and look at what you can afford to, to, to buy. You have to look at probably if you're eat, eating uh, a big plate of food, you may have to reduce the amount of food you're eating in order to help you to, to, to stretch out the, 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 the goods you have in your house to help you last you longer. They may have to be looking for more, more local, start planting a lot of little things they can plant in your backyard. There are a lot of things to help you to, to cushion the, the high prices and things you can do on your own, like chive and onion and peppers, and all the things you can plant behind your house. So another thing you can plant a little fig tree, a little plantain tree by your house, which will help you to cushion some of the prices. You know, so I think we need to begin to rethink the way we do things and do it differently, so we'll be able to survive in these hard economic times. That's a good end to a wonderful program. This program was for the consumer. Again, my name is Marvin St. Louis. I was joined by Mr. Hubert James, Interim President of the National Consumers Association. Thank you for joining Issues and Answers. Have a good day. Thank you.